Okay. okay. Three, two, one, and go. Let's so go. this is Silhouette Mirage, specifically the US version, um, which is only released on the PS2. And that is really bad. It was originally released for the Saturn in Japan, and then it got localized for the PS2, and they kind of butchered it. The localization company thought they were game developers and rebalanced everything. And that did not turn out well. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, do a little bit of a money grind. And the one good thing that developers did is the only viable weapon costs a third of what it's supposed to cost. So instead of having to do more grinding on the next screen, we can just go buy the weapon. One of the other few good things, they added those splash screens to the saves. Saturn doesn't even save, but the Japanese PlayStation port does. And it's just blank text. So the way this game works is you can only damage enemies by sh shooting them with a shot of the opposite color or attribute. You can also drain their spirit, which is what they use for bigger attacks by shooting them with like attributes, but it's kind of a waste of time. Reflector! And now we have an endgame weapon in the second screen of the game. And that's going to go exactly how you would expect it to if this enemy will quit grabbing me. There were some enemies off screen to the right. They're dead now. And we're gonna fight a mini boss. So this is Greg. He does a bunch of interesting things with that log. But I'm not playing fair, and I murdered him. I also destroyed that chicken walker. And now we're going to fight our first boss. In the US version, his name is Bug. His name in the Japanese versions is Moses because there's a lot of biblical allegory going on in this game, but uh, the localization company didn't want that, so they removed it or mistranslated it. And by playing with the dual shock, I can buffer a right input on the save menus so that I can more or less instantly skip them instead of having to take my time and do a single input. And this stage looks way better in the Saturn version. They completely removed a background layer because the PlayStation can't handle it. The PlayStation uh, doesn't really do 2D. It only understands models. Hmm. 
the good news is, without that layer and a bunch of transparency effects, the game lags a lot less. This is Nardo. Um, in the credits, he'll be called Samurai Security, which is the company he works for. Um, he's not very good at his job. Because uh, his job was to keep things quiet, and then he uh, screams out to use his special attack, and that doesn't happen. Ah, dang. So I was hoping to be able to dash into this cutscene here. Um, most of the time when you crouch tackle like that, instead of walking, it'll actually glitch you into your dash animation. And so you move over more quickly. This is Zohar. We're gonna see a lot of Zohar. The problem with Zohar is you can get them into a juggle loop and then they're pretty trivial. And now we're going into some possible RNG. If those bikers at the bottom don't want to jump up, they won't, and I just have to wait for them to decide it's time to come up. Please? Come on. Thank you. And now we're going to fight another walker. Um, the PlayStation version of the Walker's AI is worse. In the Saturn version, it would stop walking, but uh, it doesn't do that on PlayStation, so it just lets you destroy it. It doesn't always use that minigun, but that's the optimal pattern. Now we're going to fight Goliath. This is a treasure game, so it's a whole bunch of bosses. As is typical for treasure. And that went fairly well. And now we're going to fight whatever is in this box. But as it turns out, is a giant snub-nosed revolver. And that is crazy good RNG. We want lots of pink enemies because they're easier to reflect back. And we're just gonna get rid of the blue ones so we don't have to worry about them. Now, if there are any doubt that this is a Japanese-developed game, it's about to end. So, we have a giant flying fish girl that's also a tentacle monster. And this is kind of bad RNG, it wastes time, but the interesting thing about this run is that I need to die. One of the things that Sony has had a long-running tradition of doing is if you're porting a game to their console, it has to have some exclusive content. This game is no different. It has a couple of extra bosses, and one of them is kind of a secret. You have to beat most of the game without dying and then it'll potentially show up. The problem is, that's 45 seconds that I don't have because this is a speed run, and it takes about 10 seconds to die. So, ideally, something will kill me really quickly. 
and then I won't have to worry about that boss. So at no point in this run am I ever concerned about taking damage, because it's useful to take a fairly decent amount of damage. And here's this shadowy figure. He's not important at all. He's not on the disc. As opposed to his brother, who could also be on the disc, because there are two different disc arts for this game as a marketing stunt. It's the two big bads. And we're going to manipulate those enemies in the background AI by turning right and never turning back left. Because as soon as we turn left, they'll start throwing attacks at us, and if we don't have to deal with those, we're not going to. And now we're going to attempt to manipulate these guys over to the right. It kind of worked. That's all you can ever hope for from this game when it comes to manipulation. It's all RNG all the time, and it does not care about your feelings or your speedrun. We're just gonna dash through here to avoid that wheel. And we're gonna do it again the other direction. So how we have a boss that casually is really kind of interesting, but it's a speedrun, unfortunately. And his AI is really bad. So this is Pablo. He seems friendly. Clothes are kind of torn up. He's going to give us a present. Hopefully it's spirit, not... No, it's mana. It's health. He's a jerk. I didn't want to heal because I need to die. He's a werewolf. And he has a problem where if you throw him in the corner, it takes him a really long time for his AI to recover and you just kill him. It wasn't really a werewolf. It wasn't a full moon. He can just do that at will. He's not actually a nice guy. And now we're going to fight the smiley face from heck. Which is really happy and actually a chameleon. Come on. That could have been quicker, but it wasn't bad. Now you might have thought that was the area boss. I mean, look, we got a save. We got an end of level screen. Surprise, it's Zohar. I wonder how many seconds you last this time. You are being really dodgy. Fine, I'll fight you fair. I won't try to juggle you. It's 
Clearly you're not going to allow that. The juggling is much easier on the Saturn version, I find, and I don't know if that's an actual change or not. Because in my case, I use a different weapon on the Saturn version uh, for speedruns. The test does not. I just find I'm more consistent with the other weapon. Now we're in a cute little town. It's kind of nice. Except in the cutscene we just skipped, we got hit by a limo. And uh, now we're gonna fight the chauffeur. And this boss has a lot of weird cycles going on. The boss itself is hard cycle based, and then it can only transition between cycles at certain points in the background animation. And fortunately for us, sometimes it hitboxes still exist after they're not supposed to, so we can do extra damage. And I uh, apparently did that cycle so quickly it didn't load the voice clip. I don't know. That was really, really quick. Normally the game hangs at 50 HP for a minute. So good news, the chauffeur's down. The bad news, he was the distraction so that they could get us to- OH MY GOD! <laughs> that's- that's not the door to the TV station. Hopefully this screen doesn't softlock. I didn't think that it could softlock on the US version, but uh... A couple weeks ago I was doing practice and apparently it can. That was a very rude awakening and a very rude run. Now for lucky the next mini boss is going to use an attack that will just immediately wipe the floor with us. Especially at just over half health. He probably won't. So this is another really interesting boss that we're just not gonna see. Because he has a bunch of shadow puppetry abilities and they're over. Critical. So now we're back up top. We're gonna fight this game show host. That's that's not her. That is her. That's not great, but 
it's still a fairly quick fight. It's not a huge deal to not get a juggle, because this bus usually doesn't let you get a juggle. And I mash reflector because that stops the slot machine more quickly. Nine HP is actually a really good place to be. We're gonna position ourselves on purpose so that we're where the cutscene happens. And, uh. Yeah. Now we're gonna fight a really bad boss. So this is Soup Boss. We're now on a cooking show. Okay, I was gonna sniff the soup. And our goal is to make it smell bad so it damages him. Get used to power punch, more, and need salt. So he just kind of sniffs when he feels like it, and hopefully you have purple bubbles. Sometimes he just more, takes damage more, for no reason more, as well. Because this is a well-designed boss. This is also usually where runs come to die. There is absolutely nothing I can do to make this fight faster. I can only make it slower. Two more sniffs. Hey, I died! Oh no! <laughs> that was really well timed, actually. Because it positioned me exactly where I needed to be. I honestly didn't plan that, but I wish I had. So now we have a save screen. For a cutscene that we're skipping. That was not a good place for 
safe at all. Nothing happens in that cutscene. The wall explodes and there's soup everywhere and bug saves China. Dang it. Didn't take my input. So here's the interesting thing. Uh, in the Japanese version of this game, the left head has one text box, so it's faster to go to the left. In the US version, the right head has one text box, so it's quicker to go right. I don't know. So uh, we're gonna go visit Kamina Head. Not so fast, little dudette. And because it's the PlayStation, it's going to swallow us without opening its mouth. <laughs> Sorry about this. Nothing personal. And it has now eaten us. So uh we're gonna have to fight our way out. And it has a bunch of neutral enemies. Now the problem with neutral enemies, the only way to damage them is to reflect their attacks back at them. You can't shoot them. It's about to become a problem because now we're gonna fight this boss, which much like Soup, kinda just doesn't care about your speed run. Witness our power, microbe! Red Ram! Reflector! Red Ram! Reflector! Ow! Ow! Reflector! Attribute wave. He should have taken damage there, but instead, he decided to use iframes. Red Ram! Red Ram! Red Ram! We're gonna... Red Ram! Red Ram! Red Ram! We're gonna deal with these... ...little guys. Reflector! Come on. Reflector! Please? Red Ram! Red Ram! Come on. Oh boy. Attribute wave. Red Ram. Attribute wave. Red Ram. Red Ram. Red Ram. Red Ram. Red Ram. No. Oh yeah, sure. Damage. Hey good, we're in this loop. But eventually he'll break out of because him actually having an AI loop would be too useful. I mean, I can do this all day. It'd be great. Of course, that's not going to happen. Thank goodness. Power depleted. Initiate self-destruct mode. Remember the shadowy figure earlier? He's back. Time to test your metal. And this time he fights us. Surprise! 
He's not gonna let us beat him just yet, so. Half health. He's gonna destroy Prince Dam. Which is the giant snake thing we were on. The good news is, it dumps us right into where we want to go. Good boy. Now we have two walkers at once, a fast one and a slow one. That ledge is still over there, so we're going to make use of that. We're just going to zip around here. We don't need to fight those poly peepers. And it's bosses from here out. Sort of. So now we're gonna fight, uh, not this guy. Hard doesn't fight us. He has minions for that. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Namely Gargancho in here, who uh, is a giant compactor. So our goal here is to feed it stuff that it doesn't like. Tell what attribute it is by its health bar in the top right, or its wings, or the little body down in the bottom of it. And as soon as it gets three, it will crush them. But it will take 30 damage for each enemy that it ate that's the color to the damage, and it will recover spirit for any that are the same attribute. It fortunately does not heal. There is one boss that heals, and we don't fight it in a speedrun, because it's slow and annoying. It also requires us to time out a fight. Um, the next fight, in fact. Oh boy. good news is sometimes it can grab four. We only need three cycles. It will not grab five. I've tried. It won't do it. And on the weird rare occasion that it does grab a fifth enemy, it will crush before it actually eats that fifth enemy. Enemy power status critical. This boss really just did not get changed at all between the US and Japanese versions. It's one of a very few that had little nothing changed. A 
a lot of boss's enemies do significantly more damage. Uh, actually, I still needed to eat one more. I miscounted. That's dumb of me. Okay. I was just waiting for the boss to die. Surprise, Sohar! So now we're in the core of the base, and, uh... Bad news, it's going nuclear! So we have two minutes to beat the boss before it melts down. Good news, we have the boss in a juggle. This time we do have to fully deplete its health. Okay. And I actually would prefer it be in silhouette form, which is purple, for the next boss. So Har, one of the big bads, told Zohar, no. Get out of there. Get Shine to the main character. Get out of there. And the reason for that is Shine is a giant bomb. Our main character is actually a bomb so powerful it will destroy the planet if we fail in our mission. So, uh, the big bad needs to take some time to find a way to disarm that. And so, they release Zohar's limits, and uh, Zohar becomes Zofar, they, they gain a P, I don't know. Now we get the best music in the game. Oh boy. I'm actually gonna let it kill me here because I need more spirit than this to fight the final boss. Because this is unfortunately the US version where attacking costs spirit. The original Saturn version, that wasn't a thing. It wasn't a mechanic. You didn't need to be a mechanic. It's one of the balance changes that the localization company did that just ruined the game. Most of the weapons use so much spirit that they're just not viable. They don't do enough damage. Which is why we use this weapon, because they barely touched it. And that was a stupid good fight. It's nice to not have to die, but most of the time you do. And here's the final shop in the game. It has all the level 6 weapons if you need them. But odds are, Zohar, pro Zohar probably killed you, so you probably don't have enough money for anything anyway. We decided our mission is done. We like the world this way. We've been disarmed. We're gonna leave it that way. And, uh, Megiddo here kind of killed his brother, Har. 
Sure would be a shame if they were, like, two halves the same being or something. And now Megiddo is going to be in trouble. The bad news is, that is absolutely the case. So now we're on the phase two of the final boss. Time will be coming up very quickly. As soon as this boss has no more HP. We're going to use something we haven't used the entire game, the Parasite Bomb. It's pretty much useful for this final boss and nothing else. Uh, darn. And time. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. World record is 37.59 and... Anything under 42 is pretty darn good. Sub 40 is entirely up to RNG. All right, that concludes. That concludes silhouette. Nicely done. Uh, up next, we are gonna have Green Dog.